So I'm trying a slightly different format for my bullet journal videos this year, and you let me know what you think of it, okay? I mentioned that 2021 is a little experimental in my setup and intro video, so this might be how I do bullet journal videos from now on. This will be a monthly setup as well as all four weekly layouts at once. Anyway, okay, so January setup. This month is light blue, and it's sort of a dual theme because the quotes are all about winter and snow, but the doodles, if you will, are penguins inspired by a stamp set that I will show you a little bit later in the video when I actually use them for the weekly spreads. Starting off with the cover page, I wrote Hello January using a black Pentel brush pen and my blue Marabou Graphics Aqua ink using my size 2 Escoda Perla series brush and then moved on to the quote because we all know how much I love quotes. I was a little overzealous here because at the end when I filled the index I didn't leave myself quite enough lines to fill in everything because the quote's a little bit too large and a little bit too high up. But anyway, this one reads, Be like snow, cold but beautiful. For the index header, I wrote January with some jumbled up letters and drew a banner with a cute little penguin peeking out from behind the top and waving. He has a top hat and reminds me of Tuxedo Sam from Sanrio. I kind of love him. <laughs> After that cute guy, I decided to draw a couple more on the cover page. Two penguins ice skating and one ice fishing. Moving on to the next page, I'm bringing back the two page full spread monthly calendar. I had stopped doing such large calendars by the end of last year, but I decided that I really missed them. And I actually do use them, so I wanted to bring them back. I feel like it helps me have an overview of the month that's easy to just glance at and see if I have anything important coming up. I stopped making them because I hadn't been using them much, because I hadn't been doing much in 2020 with all the shutdowns and everything, but I'm optimistic that 2021 will be straightened out soon, and I like having the visual for the month. So anyway, this is a full two-page calendar, and I drew the boxes using my blue Sakura Pigma Micron because I wanted it to look like deep freeze ice under a layer of snow, since the day headers at the top are sort of an incline, like a snowy hill or something, I suppose. On the right side, I did a column for the notes section and colored the background in blue with my uh, pale blue Ecoline brush pen. And then in the space at the bottom, I put the quote. This one reads, Snow is like kindness. It beautifies everything it touches. However, my favorite part of this spread is definitely the three penguins at the top that are sliding down the snow slope. So there's, uh, there's that. <laughs> they have such cute, happy little faces. Okay, okay, on to the next two pages. I'm trying something different this month. Instead of self-help bingo, I am making a set of goals and rewards and writing a contract agreement with myself. And of course I had to hand letter said contract because it would be super boring if I didn't. So using my Sakura PN pen, I wrote out the terms of my agreement with myself, which read, I, and then a blank to write my name, understand that I am attempting to improve myself each day. I commit myself to these goals, and in turn commit to rewarding myself appropriately when a goal has been accomplished. These rewards will be fulfilled without restraint or guilt. I, another blank to write my name, commit myself to this self-care for the duration of this contract, a period of one month. And then at the bottom there's a place to sign and date as well as another cute Tuxedo Sam-like penguin at the bottom waving that I decided to draw. <laughs> By the way, has anyone else had that happen before? You place a goal for yourself and set a reward, and then you complete the goal and give yourself the reward, only to feel guilty because you've spent money on yourself or you're doing something that's uh, frivolous or what could be considered a waste of time because it's something that you like or something that you want to do. 
even though it's actually a reward for doing something that you needed to get done or wanted to do? Well, I have agreed with myself that I am not going to feel guilty. And if I do what I have set myself to do, I'm just going to reward myself and move on. I actually hadn't worked out my goals for the month when I made this page, so you won't see me fill them in here. And I actually still don't have all my rewards figured out, but I'm working on it. Oh, and in case you were wondering, the watercolor wash at the top is more of the Marabou Graphics Aqua Ink. I think I forgot to mention that it's the cyan color. That's the one that I keep using anyway. Uh, and I wrote the actual headers with my black Crayola super tip marker. Next page, I am bringing back the happiness tracker in which every day I write out something that makes me happy, something that I'm grateful for, or something that I like about myself. I did this way back last March of 2020 to great effect. I really liked it when I did it. But then I did it again in April, and I didn't end up following through on it, so I dropped it again, but it's back now. After that is the mood tracker, and of course, I had to do some more cute little penguins. And an igloo. And the ice blocks of the igloo are the days of the mood tracker, with the key at the top. After that is the YouTube and social media page, and you'll notice no habit trackers this month. I have found that they mostly give me anxiety when I see how many times I don't do things, like sleep for eight hours at a night, or eat regularly. So rather than give myself that anxiety, I just decided I'm not gonna do those anymore. I'll just ignore how unhealthy I am, and that means it's okay, right? <laughs> uh, moving on. The brain dump for January is walking through a mental wonderland. Obviously a play on the song Walking in a Winter Wonderland. But I am just now realizing I missed an opportunity for a pun here. What I should have written was waddling in a mental wonderland since penguins waddle. Though that's a little further removed from the original phrase, so maybe that would have been too much. Well, either way, after the brain dump, it's time for the week one layout. I started off here with a light blue Crayola marker, though I wish I had used a lighter light blue because I used it for the number day and then wrote in black over the top of it the name of the day of the week and incorporated that into the boxes to separate the days for the week one layout. But it's a little bit dark and kind of hard to read. Um, but anyway. Once the boxes were done, it was time to bring in that stamp set I mentioned earlier that inspired the theme for this month. This is a set from Mama Elephant called Arctic Penguins. It's not a new stamp set, but it's new to me. I just got it for Christmas, and I really love these cute little guys. So here I'm using a post-it note to mask off the boxes and make it look like the penguins are poking out from behind them to say hello. I'm stamping with Stays On ink since it is a pigment ink and it sits on top of the paper, more so than a dye ink would, as those usually tend to soak into the paper, so they bleed through to the other side. Also, it's water fast, so when I add a drop shadow to the boxes and color in the little penguin's beaks with my gray marker, it won't smudge. I'm not sure if it's not bleeding through the paper because of how thick the pages in this particular bullet journal are, so if you do want to use stamps in your own bullet journal, I really strongly suggest that you test the ink that you want to stamp with on a page, maybe in the back of the book, or something like that, so you're sure that it won't bleed through the pages. And now I'm wondering, since these pages are so thick, maybe I can use alcohol markers in this bullet journal. Hmm. Something to try later, I guess. Anyway, I added a bunch of little penguins randomly scattered around, peeking out from behind the boxes. And one penguin, on the notes section, I stamped with some China Glaze Distress Oxide ink. Because of the pigment properties of this ink, it doesn't bleed through like regular distress inks tend to. I also touched up the penguins with my Posca marker because they didn't really stamp completely solidly. 
And once that's done, I went on to week two. No quote for week one, you'll notice. I got a little overexcited by the penguins, and I sort of forgot to leave space for one. For week two, I left myself a large note section at the bottom on the right-hand page. And after that, the first thing I did was my quote, which reads, No winter lasts forever. No spring skips its turn. From Hal Borland. I marked out the boxes with my black Posca marker as well, and I ended up using my sky blue Posca to write the date number and fill in the little field to the right of each box where the name of the day of the week will go. Once that's all taken care of, I grabbed my stamps once again and that China Glaze Distress Oxide Ink. I do wish I had tumbled glass instead. The China Glaze color is a little too green compared to the rest of the blues on the page, but I was using what I had available and this is the only light blue Distress Oxide Ink that I own. Anyway, I stamped some penguins hanging out ice skating in the section between the notes and the days of the week, and I even drew a little ice flow for them to stand on. Which brings me... Which brings up the point that if you don't have this stamp set or you don't have a stamp set, you absolutely could doodle these. I just thought it was at something different. I don't usually use stamps in my bullet journal. Um, so I thought it might be fun. For week three, I did some more boxes. This time I tried to keep things pretty pastel and light. I used pumice stone distress oxide ink, since it's the only gray oxide ink I have. And once again, I'm using post-it notes just to mask off the boxes, though this time I'm masking off the outside of the boxes so I can stamp the penguins inside the boxes so it looks like they're standing inside of a building or something and these are windows they're looking out of. I did them in gray rather than black or blue because I figured if I did need to write over them for any reason, writing over light gray with black ink would probably stand out the best. I then used my two blue zebra mild liners to highlight behind the areas where I'm going to write the day of the week and the date. It's always better to highlight an area first if you know that you want a highlight there instead of writing first and highlighting over the words. It minimizes the potential for smudging. And while that was drying, I grabbed my parallel pens again and added the quote for this page. Winter is a season of recovery and preparation said by Paul Thoreau. On the left, I left my standard space for notes, and after I wrote the titles of the days of the week and the uh, week three header at the top of the page, it was on to the final layout for this month. This one I wanted to be different. All the layouts have involved column-like boxes, so this time I decided to split the page in half and make rows instead of columns. So I made the rows five squares tall, since there are 40 squares total, and I wanted eight sections. And I alternated stamping a penguin and the letter of each day of the week on every other side of the center spine of the book back and forth down the page. Once again, I grabbed the China Glaze Distress Oxide ink and just put a little bit of a blend using my mini ink blending tool at the beginning and ends of each row alternating back and forth, just to add a little more interest. And then I used my black brush tip Posca marker for the first time since November 2020, and I found that it is pretty clumped up with paint. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to save it, I might just need to purchase a new one, it's pretty beat up. I managed to get the day of the week letters written, but they're really thick and clumpy and not very pretty looking. The last field at the bottom is an N for notes, and the right side of the page will be my notes section, while the left side is where I will put the quote for the week, which I ended up writing too big and sort of had to squish in the bottom row of it onto the page. <laughs> uh, it reads, in seed time learn, in harvest teach, in winter enjoy. Uh, but oh well. The dates are written in metallic blue Posca pen with a little black drop shadow, and the letters for the days of the week have silver drop shadows, which also look a little sloppy because I did them with my metallic silver Posca brush pen, but yeah, with that, December is done. Sorry for the slightly long video. 
I figure I can do one long video like this once per month for layouts instead of doing one short one every week. But let me go know what you guys think. Did you prefer the shorter videos or are these longer ones okay? And yes, as you can see here with me filling out the index, I did run out of space so I couldn't add the page number for week four on the list. Oops. Uh, anyway, please like and subscribe if you like bullet journal videos. Check out my 13 days of giftmas giveaway if you are watching this in early 2021. And until my next video, I will talk to all of you soon. Bye!